6.45 in the morning and we're headed to work bright and early. Am I awake? Maybe. So I'm headed into work super early today because I need to leave a little early because I need to be productive. It's the second to last day before Bonnaroo and I still have a bunch of stuff to do before I get there. And so, yeah, we're gonna use the evening for that and the morning for working type things. So I'm taking you guys with me and today I wanna talk about developer interviews and how they can be weird and not the same at all between one place and another or between one job posting and the same job posting at the same place but different people doing it. I don't know. And then at the end, uh, this is a tease. At the end, I'm going to share something with you that I think is super, super interesting and you should all absolutely check out. So yeah, make sure you stick around until the end. of the issue around developer interviews and technical interviews in general is the fear of the unknown. And honestly, I'm going through that right now in my own personal life, not with interviews, but the analogy still holds up, right? I am about to go embark on this journey to Bonnaroo with my father, and we've never done this before. And I have a lot of worries about it because do I have the right stuff? How are we going to make it happen? All of these things. And that is totally valid. I totally get where people are coming from when it comes to this. And if you wouldn't mind, let me take a pause right here and down in the comments, have you guys been on an interview yet? Are you thinking about going on an interview soon? Do you have one scheduled? And what are you most worried about when it comes to the interview? Now, what I wanna do is try my best to explain to you what a typical interview process is for a development job. And I do this with one really big catch, and that's that they're not always typical. See, I've been through the process for a bunch of different places and they're all a little different, but there are some standards that typically hold true and I'm going to run through those in this video. All right, so you've done it. You've become comfortable enough with your skills that you want to apply for a job and you send off a thousand applications and then you get that first response. Where does it go from here? Typically, the first step in any interview is going to be some sort of phone screen, and that phone screen is typically not technical. It's usually somebody from HR just talking to you to make sure you're a real person, to make sure some things are true about yourself, if you're a local or if you're working like remotely, all of those things. It's just really a screener to make sure you're not going to like come into the office in like jorts and a tank top and just not take this seriously. That's really what it's about. And the only exception to this, like the first step being a phone interview has only happened to me a couple of times and then the first step is a coding challenge like straight away they just send you a challenge in an email with instructions on how to do it and a time frame to get it done and that's happened to me I think twice in all of the jobs that I've applied for and these coding challenges that you can get you can get them a bunch of different times throughout the process but this is one of the spots well what are they they can be a lot of different things they can be simple just responsive layout pages like that you have to build with HTML CSS and a bit of JavaScript they can be really in-depth uh, Angular React apps that you have to build. They can be parts of like fake code bases that you have to dig through. I've seen the gamut and I'll do another video about coding challenges when it comes to developer interviews in the near future. So staying along the standard path, you get a phone screen and then the next step. The next step is either that coding challenge that you didn't get as a first step or a technical phone screen, a screen with like the people who you'll be working with, like other developers as opposed to somebody from HR. That's pretty typical. And this can be a technical phone screen just like talking like simple questions about JavaScript and other things that you've learned or the backend language that you choose or whatever language it is you're, that you're applying for. Um, or it can get really, really weird. And this has happened to me a couple times and that's like shared screen coding sessions. Basically you're like in a fake Google Doc IDE and you get coding challenges right there and you have to do them. It's kind of a way to circumvent the whiteboarding thing. You do it like live on the internet as opposed to live in person. And those things are wild, but that's typically the next step. And I'm at work now, so I'm gonna run inside and then I'll come back out here and explain the rest of the process after I get some work done. Okay, so productive day at work, but I didn't get to leave quite as early as I wanted to, which is fine, but it's really hot in my car. So I'm gonna drive home and then kind of go over the rest of the interview process 
process with you guys. I will see you there. Okay, so you made it through the phone screen and then the other phone screen or the coding challenge and now it's probably time to come into the office. And when you go into the office for an interview, they can be really, really different depending upon what kind of place you're working for and how they interview, just like every other step in this process. So, I mean, you could be in a panel interview with a bunch of other developers or the possible team that you're with. I used to work at a place where they would do like a panel like discussion session where you would present something and then talk about it and be asked questions. There can be whiteboarding involved here, pseudo coding. I was in an interview once where they gave me a piece of paper that had some code on it and I was supposed to find bugs in the code. This really ranges, but this is going to probably be the most technical aspect of the interview. Even if there's not whiteboarding, they're going to ask you probably some logical questions, things that you've built, why you made decisions, possibly review your GitHub or projects that you've put on your portfolio and ask questions about those. And this is really the most intimidating part. They can last a long time, like three or four or five or six hours. Um, and you can be talking to like two to four to six people or more. It's really intimidating, but it's just the next step in the process and you've already made it this far, so there's no reason to fret at this point. And then that's usually the end of the line. There may be another phone screen or in-person interview, possibly. There may be a coding challenge after that, depending upon if they had you whiteboard or not. Um, you may have to talk to somebody higher up, like a CEO or CTO or something like that as well. But that's kind of, if you've gotten past this far and you move on to the next steps, you're really kind of over the hill as far as like the hardness of the interview goes. And now I'm gonna run inside because it is still very hot outside, but don't go away just yet because I still have that one thing I need to share with you. All right, in the house now, in the AC, it feels so much better. But what is this thing that I'm on about? Well, walk with me. So. There's this guy, his name's Joshua. He does YouTube videos too. See, he's a developer. He also has a degree in like mechanical engineering and he went to a coding boot camp, I'm pretty sure. And this guy is the real MVP. What he did was actually record, he like filmed an actual developer interview. And not just one, but two. So you should really check that video out. I'm gonna link it down in the description below. But if you're wondering what developer interviews are like, like seriously, you can go watch like a real one. Check it out, check the link in the description. All right, and that is all I'm gonna have for you today. This week is going to be wonky and so is next week as far as like upload schedule goes. I'm gonna try to put a video out both weeks, like this one this week and then one next week. And as far as live streams go, I'm gonna try to do a live stream on Wednesday but I'll be driving as well. I might be stuck in a line so I might be able to do it from there with my dad. We'll see what happens. And then next week, probably no live stream but I'll keep you updated. Anyways, if you like this video, hit that like button because they are super awesome and they make me smile. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Go to Josh's channel, show them some love, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't on my videos, hit the subscribe button as well because that would be super cool. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you again very soon.